Hello my SOC universe and I'm back with a rather surprising Sunday Serie A video. Yeah, international break is over, the leagues have us back, some are rejoicing. I'm a little bit sad but on the other side, you know, uh, it's exciting to see the seasons finish and then we can go right into Euro 2020, 20, 21, whatever you want to call it. Um, I decided to wear the Verona away jersey and yeah, I should probably have uh, them put some Doria there and move everything up so that Parma goes here. Sorry, I just realized that when I was starting the video and I want to get the video done. I also have, have to say with the new standings, there's a, almost a little bit too much, too much blue, especially since Roma uh, now dropped and they played at the away game, so I decided to put the away jersey. So it's not the most exciting Serie A background. But that doesn't really bother us at the moment, because we want to now see what happened in Serie A, where everything had to be played on the Saturday before Easter, because on Easter you cannot play soccer. Yeah, okay. Still a very Catholic country, this Italy. Uh, I have to say the biggest one is, yeah, we can't forget about the title race. Um, it's all about the Champions League race for the Champions League spots. The first spot is taken, so we have three spots available with potentially five contenders, six contenders. Uh, I will see about the chances there, but I think it's probably... Uh, up to five realistically four contenders for three spots and the biggest one, uh, news out of that one is whoa is you actually not gonna make the champions league there is a chance and this is a development that is rather concerning especially if you're a juve fan uh, i have a slightly you know, I'm not a Juve fan, so I can have a slightly more level take on it, but we'll talk about this when we uh, look at the table. And yeah, also Roma, a little bit in trouble. I think Roma is not in the Champions League conversation anymore. On the bottom, things remain rather steady, so uh, it's still the same three teams that, uh, um, that we always say will go down. Uh, yeah, sad to see some of these go down, but... It is what, what it is. Um, it all started yesterday, lunchtime. And I mean, it's great to have all the games on one day. I actually would like to go back to that uh, and not have it all, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I, I actually really like have all the games of one round played on one day. Uh, and it should be Sunday and with the majority played at 3 o'clock, not Saturday. But yeah, I understand Easter. But uh, yeah, I don't really understand, but I, I know the reasoning. Uh, let's put it like that. So Milan got the honor to uh, do the first game and while initially I was excited, I knew this will not be an easy game at Sampdoria and then uh, you realize, yeah, Sampdoria barely had any, any international players. Milan had tons of uh, players away and then you get the early kickoff. Yeah, I don't like that. And that's exactly how the game played out. I mean, for the first 30 minutes, it was Sampdoria, especially at the beginning. Sampdoria was a whole lot more dangerous and Donnarumma had to pull out a few saves. Uh, Milan got control of the, of the game late. Later on there was maybe a shot for a penalty, but yeah, I can get. Ibrahimovic was in a slightly worse position and then suddenly he's being pushed down. Yeah, I can get why this penalty was not given. Of course, I would have loved to see it there. Um, but other than long range shots that were blocked, uh, there was not much coming from Milan. Second half, almost similar picture. It almost looked helpless in, 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 in a way. And the helplessness was really uh, magnified in the 57th when Theo Hernandez and I can even see almost why he played that pass but uh, you need to have a little bit more uh, awareness. It looks like nothing. There are the Milan defenders and uh, this Cagliarella guy is hiding behind one so Hernandez plays a horrible pass that Cagliarella intercepts and lobs it over down, 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 down the room in the internet and I thought yeah Milan's gonna lose this one. Uh, fortunately uh, Adrian Silva decided to give Milan a chance two minutes later by tripping up a player at midfield and so Milan enjoyed a main advantage but it took a whole lot of time. Uh, Benacea came off, Kurunic came off, I mean the starting line. I also knew without Calabria Milan is not as potent. It, it, it is staggering to think but I, I think Calabria is one of those make or break players for, for, for Milan. If he's playing Milan usually is really really good. If he's not, it's, a, it's not it's not the uh, Jalanoglu's or uh, uh, Ibra's up, uh, up front. It's really if they can go over the side and I thought Salamakers, trying Salamakers was a good 
uh, shout, but you know, he came off at halftime for Kalulu. As I said, it took a whole lot of time and it was only in the last 15, 20 minutes that I really thought that Milan had uh, good chances uh, to go uh, and maybe uh, get the draw and they get it through uh, Hauge, who, uh, yeah, the, the goalkeeper all, all there shouldn't have come, come, come out there, I was assisted by Kessie, but it was all Hauge, his move and um, getting everyone off balance and pulling it into the empty net then. 1-1, one, one. Kessie later on could have even won it for Milan with uh, hitting the crossbar, it got deflected. Uh, I would have loved it, but I think it would have been a little bit too much, to be honest. Uh, Milan did not play well. Um, I knew this is now the first game back from the international break with lots of players being played. I actually think Milan will start playing a lot better uh, in the upcoming week now that they can take a little bit more break and a little bit more work on the train training ground. So, um, yeah, a must win, but I expected it a little bit like that. Um, Atalanta, the score then looks a whole lot closer than what the game was. I mean, Luis Muriel in the first half, in the 19th and especially in the 43rd, uh, how he got the system of Manuel Nolosk and how he dances then around the Uden defense, that was uh, really first class. However, a little bit shaky on on, on the back, and then it's Pereira who uh, pulls one back for Udine. Zapata in the 61st gives Atalanta the lead, lead again, but Sviga Larsen only, only 10 minutes later makes the game much closer. However, it was always more towards 4 2 than e e actually to a 3 3. But the afternoon games, uh, there were quite some. Uh, Back and forth, I mean, the Benevento Parma uh, add, adding a draw. I saw the highlights of uh, Hellas. I'm wearing Hellas, so I decided to watch the highlights of that one too. Uh, against Cali, it was an even game where Barra gets the goal, and then when Cali is pressing later on, uh, Verona uh, scores the second. Lazio Spezia, uh, notable for two things. A the equalizer by Spezia, probably the goal of the uh, weekend. Nice. Uh, uh, bicycle kick into it by Verde. Uh, Lazzari had given uh, Lazio La to the lead. And then later on, Lazio gets the penalty. Um, uh, Caicedo converts it. And you think the game is done? Doesn't Lazio play at home? They completely imploded. Lazzari for a really rough tackle gets sent off the 96. And then Correa uh, gets a second yellow. There was no need. This was all midfield. Uh, absolute crazy. And uh, yeah, it doesn't bode well for La Lazio going forward in losing two players now for a while. I mean, the Lazzari foul was really rec re re reckless and probably will be out for at least two games. Another crazy game, Napoli Crotone, which also almost unnecessary got tighter because Napoli completely dominated Cro uh, Crotone. Insigne getting the first and uh, three minutes later, he, he assists Ozyman uh, to make it 2 0, and I think Napoli cruising. I personally, at this point, I knew the Milan had run. I didn't want any one of the ones below to really win. So we'd already Atalanta winning, and uh, yeah, Na Napoli, I always thought, will win again against Crotone. Simi pull, pulls back, but Riz Mertens with a great free kick makes it 3 1. Yeah, that should settle it for Napoli. Shouldn't it? Nah, not really, not really. Because Simi in the 48th and Messias in the 50th actually get the, the equalizer. Um, and it's more exploiting Napoli's defensive frailties than actually having really control of, of the game. However, Di Lorenzo gets the fourth goal for Napoli. Rough work, but they get the win. And Napoli, at the moment, one is tempted to say uh, that they actually might snatch the Champions League spot from Juve, but there's something come, 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 come up in the midweek that we have to see. Uh, Sassuolo Roma, honestly, it was a game where Sassuolo played and the Roma scored. Uh, the first goal was a penalty by Pellegrini, who actually played for Sassuolo. It was high time that Sassuolo gets the equalizer in 57th through Traore. And then uh, just 12 minutes later, uh, Perez. Gives the lead to Rome again. There was a huge chance by Majoral, how he very nicely controls the pass, but then the goal, goalkeeper is right there. That would, would have been a great goal, but I think when uh, Raspadori gave uh, Sassuolo the equalizer, it was more than deserved. The Turin derby, Derby della Mole. I think Juve started out quite well and got a deserved lead through Kiekes. I mean, they probably should have led by that uh, point already, but then they implode a little bit defensively, so Nabria can get an equalizer from a short uh, range. Um, and Torino could hold the game a little bit more open. So Nabria directly after the half makes it even 2 1 for Torino, but then it happens what usually happens when the underdog uh, goes up. 
they want to hold on to it and they were defending 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 and it was not bound to uh, to last. Uh, Ronaldo gets equalized in 79th. Ample of time for to, uh, for Juve to maybe find a winner. However, they don't find it. On the other side, uh, Torino probably should have had a penalty as well. So maybe overall the draw all right. And then with all the games going in their favor, Inter just knew if we get the win, the Scudetto is more or less ours and we're the big winners of the match day. And it's exactly what, what they got. Bologna tried a lot, had a lot of possession, uh, but Inter played it uh, professionally at home. I mean, uh, not that uh, Bologna had great chances. They controlled the game, but there was no punch really. And Inter was one nice uh, cross, um, Bastoni. A uh, really nice cross in. Lukaku uh, had it. It is saved, but it goes on the cross plane. Lukaku then pulls it over, over the line. Very nicely played goal. Maybe the finish uh, not as nice. But Inter hangs on, and you could see the way they were celebrating, and then you, this is the Scudetto. They have it in the hand. And if we look at the standings, 98% chance of winning the league. You have a game less, eight points ahead. It's pretty much done. As for the Champions League race, Atalanta now, Atalanta and Milan still seem kind of uh, more in than out. Uh, Juve and Napoli, hmm, it gets a little bit shaky there. And Lazio, Roma only with outside chances. Um, I think it is Milan, Atalanta and Juve and Napoli that make, one of them will not make the Champions League. I, at this moment, I still think that Milan probably has enough to get in. Um, Atalanta probably will get in there. I would, I will, 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 will agree that they're most certain in there. I think it might be between Juve and Napoli uh, who will get in. And just thinking about Juve not get, get, get in, it's a little bit uh, staggering because this might be the minimum um, thing that you would have expected from Juve this season. Um, I honestly think that Juve per se is not that bad on a path. They, I think, have the right idea. They want to really change the culture of play within Juventus to be able to challenge for Europe. However, you, the timing of it is a little bit curious because you still have Ronaldo that you actually bought to win the Champions League and now he's kind of this transition player who's probably more or less on his way out because uh, Juve is not going to win the Champions League this year, probably not next year either. Uh, and that's not what Ronaldo wants. Um, I honestly think you got to see the project out. I know that uh, many are calling for Pillow's head. Please, you hired a coach with no experience. He's learning on the job. I don't think he's doing that bad of a job. I mean, uh, there were some games where Juve were quite convincing. The problem is Juve doesn't have a good midfield. And this is where you have to uh, put your full focus on. I actually would give. I, I always call for more patience, especially with young managers. Call for more patience uh, in moving forward uh, of how to move there. And yes, it would be a big disaster for Juventus maybe to not make the Champions League. But um, I remember you were not being the, the, in the Champions League, uh, you know, just when they got uh, dropped down to CRB, they built something, they built a dynasty in, it, in Italy. Maybe if you want to make this next huge step, you need to take a step back. I think this short term thinking of just this, I mean, and I, I have to say, I was a little bit geeky of as well, but I remind myself with Milan, I think Milan is ahead in its development. Milan, may, uh, the goal was making the Champions League, which probably they will make this season. Challenging for a title, not quite, quite, quite yet, but I think that Inter is at the moment at its peak. Milan is building something. I actually think the best years are yet to come for Milan. Uh, yeah, we need to contract extension as well, but I don't want to do it in this video. I think for Juve, on a higher level than Milan, is the same thing, you want to build something and there you probably have to take a step back. I think the talent is there. I mean, you have Kiesa, you have Kul, you have Kulusevski. There are really bright players. You have the Licht and so on. The bright players in there. You can probably challenge maybe for our, for our title much sooner than you want. I think this season should be a write-off. If you don't make it to Champions League, maybe that's even not so bad because you could then really, really focus on the next Serie A campaign and Pirlo will have a lot more um, experience then. Um, let's move to the bottom of the table. Uh, we have Torino still a little bit in danger, but you know with two points ahead of Cagliari, it really seems that Cagliari, Parma and Crotone will go down 
I'm sorry to say, I don't think that any of the other ones will get implicated there unless you go on a bad run. Fioritina is still way too far down there. Um, in this case, it also, um, we need to adjust because we have a few uh, teams with uh, games in hand. Uh, Inter's lead would be more than Juve. At the moment, it will still be ahead of Atalanta, uh, Napoli also in there. So it's very, very tight there. Um, as I said, Juve still with games in hand would be ahead, ahead of Atalanta. We'll have to see how this game in hand will go. But before we look at the schedule, here are also the expected final standings. And Atalanta now has leapfrogged Milan uh, at the time being. And Juve still ahead of uh, Napoli expected. So I would not say it's all that bad. But you know, you could get in, in the trouble. And you could get in the trouble because on Wednesday we have Juve against Napoli. That's a big one. That's the big one. That's the one from, uh, should have been playing in October. This was when we were still kind of in COVID crisis. I mean, if you look at the results there, uh, it seems like a different age almost. Huge game. I think this will be make, make or break uh, for Juve and Napoli. Um, a draw, I don't think, will either one do uh, good in the long term running because you can really knock at the opponent. But I think a draw is probably not an unlikely result there uh, because they don't want to do it trust just now let's let it play out over another make make game at the same time inter against sassuolo um yeah if milan would have won and inter would have draw points this could have been important uh, at the moment i don't think this is just from before uh, the international break and then on the weekend we have parma milan probably about i'll i'll be watching uh juve genoa that's the bogey team for juve so another big one uh hellas against lazio i think is a very interesting game um fiorentina atalanta yeah it looks enticing but you know atalanta will probably win this rather easily i think more uh roma bologna because roma really needs to get something going but it's not like a round where we, where we have games that are really really uh standout games let's put it that way in any case, let me know what you thought about this round, what you think about Juve's chances or who will go in the, cha in the, in the Champions League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.